what we have in front of us here today is a Honeywell boiler, hot water and central heating 24 hour 7 day programmer. Now you're probably used to the newer type ones where they have a battery in the bottom that you can take out and replace, maybe two AA batteries. But these ones were fitted to houses in the United Kingdom. I'm not sure about the US or anywhere else, but in the United Kingdom they were fitted about 15 to 20 years ago. And these are not wireless, these are wired systems. And they're still being used in uh, many houses today. Now, the issue with this one, or what happens with these is, they have a fixed battery which is soldered into the main board inside that cannot be replaced under no normal circumstances. So what happens is, the way these were set up was that there was a, a cable that came out from the bottom with a separate on-off switch, so a mains on-off switch. So whenever you wanted to, you could switch off the entire programmer and the boiler system at a main switch, which was usually uh, wired in on the side. So what happens is when you switch off the main switch and the battery, as you can imagine, these are 15 to 20 years old now. Once the battery dies, every time you would switch off the main switch, it would forget all the programmed settings and then you'd have to do it again, which is uh, quite a tedious process. So what I'm going to do today, I mean, I've checked online and these are still selling brand new for about £200. And you can repair it actually for quite cheap. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to dismantle this uh, programmer, how to source the replacement battery, how to remove it from the board and how to fit a new one. So let's get started. Okay so what we're going to do is we're going to turn it around and if you have a look here right you've got four tabs one tab here one tab here one here on this side and then one here on this side you need to remove those tabs and the way you do it is you get your screwdriver you wedge it in here and you pop these out from the bottom okay so i'm going to do these four and then uh, we'll have a closer look inside Okay, so we've got the back cover off. You can see these are the four tabs that I had to push back with the uh, screwdriver. And this is what the main board basically looks like. So we'll take this off. Right. You can have a closer look here. So the part that we're interested in is this part here. This is the fixed battery which is soldered onto the board. And if you have a look at the back here, it's soldered onto the board at these three points here. One, two, three. So to remove it, it's quite simple. All you have to do is add some leaded solder into the three points to soften the solder that's already there. Get yourself a soldering iron and some solder wick and wick out all of the old solder at these points. Once you've done that, you should be able to just pull the battery out from the top. But before we do that, let's move over to the PC and I'm going to show you how to source this uh, particular battery. So let's do that now. Right, so I've taken the battery off the board and as you can see here, there's three points at the bottom that are soldered into the board and it consists of uh, three separate batteries inside which are shrink wrapped and then um, they've got two three solder points attached to each side so that's what it looks like let's go into the microscope and uh, we'll have a look at the um, the details of the battery okay so we've got the battery under the microscope and you can see here it says NIMH that's the type of battery it says ATBVH times 3 and then it says 3.6 volts and it says ATMAH which is the capacity of the battery in milliamp hours so 
when you want to look for this battery what you need to do is you need to get onto uh, eBay or Google and type in 3.6 volts ATH and IMH battery and you should be able to find it and what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to switch over to the PC and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that but before we do that I just want to quickly test this battery and see if there is any voltage inside it or if it's completely dead so let's do that now if you have a look at the top left hand corner of the screen you can see a box there with the voltage displayed so let's quickly check the voltage and let's see what we're getting okay so as you can see the battery only has a capacity of 1.2 volts and it should be 3.6 volts or above if the battery cannot get up to 3.6 volts it will not save the memory so this battery definitely needs replacing okay so I just quickly thought I'll show you this page brand new these are still selling for about 200 pounds second hand you can get them for a cheaper so if you have got one where the battery has died they're definitely worth repairing as you can save yourself a significant amount of money okay let's get back to that battery so what you want to do is you want to get onto eBay or any other place wherever you prefer um, and you want to type in 3.6 volts ATH battery right and what you'll get is a, a full list of them that will come up if you have a look here this one is made by Varta and it's 3.6 volts NIMH which is what we're interested in this one is 70 milliamp hours hours is 80 but this is fine it will still do the job right now the key thing that you want to look for when you're searching for this battery is you want the battery with three solder points at the bottom which is what we've got on our board see some of them here like this one this is a two pin type it's got two solder points at the bottom you don't want this for our board we want the three pin type so just bear that in mind and um, as long as it's a V80H it should be the exact same size so you've got a range here to choose from prices are from around five pounds to uh, six seven pounds around about that that's what you're expecting to pay for it so I've actually ordered one of these in and uh, I'm gonna open it now for you and uh, we're gonna test it here on the table and we're gonna see what the voltage is on a new battery the new battery has been delivered and this is exactly how it came so I'm gonna take it apart in front of you here and we'll test the voltage on the bench as you can see it's the exact same size and the same milliamp hour rating as well and it's got three points at the bottom so let's quickly go and check the voltage on this don't worry if it's a bit bent from here you can always straighten that out later on that's not an issue when we get to the board main thing is to make sure that the dimensions are the same and uh, as you can see here they they are there you go here's another view of the battery a bit of a close-up and uh, you can see it's ex ex it's exactly the same so let's quickly check the voltage on it again if you keep an eye on the top left hand corner of the screen you should be able to see the voltage reading there so let's do that now and as you can see as a brand new fully charged battery should be we're reading 3.8 volts which is uh, perfect so we've confirmed that the new battery is fine and what we're now going to do is we're going to proceed to installing that battery onto the board so we've got the board here and the points that we're going to be installing is here one two three so it's really easy all you do is you grab your new battery okay and you stick it on here like so okay so that's in and then you solder it from the bottom which is what we're going to do now okay so we've got the board and the battery under the microscope and uh, to attach it it's really simple what you want to do is just add a bit of flux the flux that I'm using today is uh, Topnik AG5 I'll be adding the flux to all three points on the board you can't see the other two at the moment but they are being added and the solder that I'm going to be using today is a, a mixture of 6337 right what we're going to do is we're going to set the iron the soldering iron to 
350 degrees and we're going to solder those three points onto the board. So here we go. So we're just applying some fresh solder to the tip of our iron and uh, we should proceed to solder this point one by one. And that's it. Place a bit of solder onto our soldering iron tip and park it up. And finally what you want to do is you want to take a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol and you want to clean all that flux off the board because if you don't it will corrode the solder joints over time and we don't want that. So let's do that now. And as you can see our solder joints are nice and shiny which indicates that we've got strong solder joints. So as you can see, it's attached to the board quite nice and solidly and uh, it's ready to go back into the main case. So let's go back to the demonstration table and let's fit it all back together. Fitting it back together is actually easier than taking it apart. It's very simple. All you need to do is pick up the main PCB Okay, and uh, put it around in this orientation here, fit it back inside here, make sure these holes here at the top line up with the metal pins here at the back. That's all it was, two clicks, one click on this side, one click on this side and it's all back together. And that's all there is to it really. If you've got one of these and uh, you can't do the repair yourself, we charge £25 for the labour. £5 for the battery and £5 to ship it back to you. So you're talking about £35 to £40 to get one of these repaired. You can contact us through the website. All the links are available below and uh, we'll get back to you to assist you further. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope I was able to save you some money and save you from chucking your old Honeywell programmer into the trash. And with that we're going to conclude today's video. As always, bye for now and have a nice day.